Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Briefings Direct Voice of the Customer podcast series. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inter Arbor Solutions, your host and moderator for this ongoing discussion on digital transformation success stories. Our next hybrid cloud advancement interview explores how a triumvirate of global data center hosting company, a hybrid cloud platform provi- provider, and a global cloud community are solving some of the most vexing problems for bringing high-performance clouds to more regions around the globe. We'll now learn how Equinix, Microsoft, Azure Stack, and Hewlett Packard Enterprises Cloud 28 Plus are helping MSPs and businesses alike attain world-class hybrid cloud services. Here to help us explore new breeds of hybrid cloud solutions in every corner of the globe, we're joined by David Anderson, Global Alliance Director at Equinix for its Microsoft Alliance. Welcome, David. Thanks, and, and thanks for having me, Dana. Very, very welcome. We're also here with Xavier Poulson. He's the Vice President, Worldwide Services Providers Business and Cloud 28 Plus at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Welcome. Hi, Dana. Welcome. Uh, let's see. It seems to me that there's sort of a paradox when it comes to the hybrid cloud, that it works best in close proximity technically, but uh, has the most business payoff when you can distribute it far and wide. So how are Equinix and Microsoft and HPE together helping to solve this paradox of proximity and distribution, David? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think that you're right in the sense that hybrid cloud does tend to work better when there's a, a proximity between the what we call the hybrid installation and the actual public cloud they're connected to. But that proximity can be actually lengthened a little bit uh, with what we call interconnectedness. Interconnectedness is really those business to business and business to cloud private network ethernet connections. And so Equinix is positioned such with over 200 data centers worldwide and the most interconnections by far around the world, every network provider is in our data centers, that we also work with the cloud providers like Microsoft with the Equinix Cloud Exchange to connect businesses, enterprises to those clouds through our Equinix Cloud Exchange fabric with a simple one port virtual connection software defined networking up to the clouds. What that does is that brings low latency, high performance, up to 10 gig network links. So they're connected. So now you can run a hybrid application and it's running as if it's sitting in your corporate data center not far away. The idea of saying yes, but then the idea of hybrid is going to be more dispersed. Well, that dispersion really takes place through the breadth. Of, of our reach at Equinix with, uh, you know, over 200 data centers and 45 metros and, and all over the world and, and interconnected all over, plus then over 50 Azure regions when we're working with Microsoft that we're all located fairly close to, we can actually get it out to the customers fairly easily and with all the network service providers in our, our facilities. There's not very many places on earth that uh, a customer can't get from where they're at to where we are to a cloud with a really high quality network link. Mm -hmm. And uh, Xavier, why is uh, what we just heard about what uh, Microsoft and Equinix can do together such a good fit for Cloud 28 Plus in your community? How do you fit together to make that happen across those different regions? So the first thing I need to say is that Hewlett Packard Enterprise has invested a lot in intellectual property building our own HP, Microsoft Azure Stack solution. And if you look at that, it is to give the experience of a private cloud while using the Microsoft Azure technologies too. Our customers want to have two things. First of all, to be able to execute on their premises, but also to connect to wider clouds. This is what the is enabled by what we are doing with a partner like Equinix because we can jump from on-prem to off-prem for an end-user customer. This is the first point. The second point is when a customer decides to go for a new architecture around hybrid, he may have uh, to get a reach, and this reach is global now. So how we can uh, support partners to find the right place, the right partners at the right moment, in the right geographies, with the right SLAs, in order that they can meet their business needs. The fact that we have Equinix inside Cloud28 Plus as a very, very solid partner is really helping 
all, all customers and also our partners to find their, their route. Because if I am a, an enterprise customer, let's say, uh, in Australia, and I want to have a reach in Europe or, or a reach in Japan, I can find through Cloud 28 Plus the right service providers that can operate for me the service, but will be also hosted by a very compelling uh, colocation company like Equinix with the right SLAs, and this is for the benefit of every single customer. The other thing is, for all service providers, it has a lot of benefits. Why? Because all service providers are evolving their technologies, are evolving their go-to-market, and need to adapt. They need sometimes to jump from one country to another country, and they need to have a sustainable network to make it happen. And that's what Equinix is also providing. So not only we help the end user customer, but we help also our service providers and MSPs to really build their capabilities while we all know that with the direct connection that was uh, mentioned uh, by Dave just a minute ago, they can also have a direct connectivity with their end user customer. So it is only benefits on the capability to have choice, and for the partners, and for the end user customers, and this can be found at only one place, which is Cloud 28 Plus, so which is really amazing. Uh, it seems to me that this is something that's fairly new, that this couldn't really have been done uh, that far in the past. What are some of the compelling use cases, David, that you're seeing that demonstrate where this works best, or who the low-lying fruit, if you will, should be? Who should be thinking about this solution? Well, I think the, that the solution itself, especially on Azure Stack, is really suited toward those regions that have, have data sovereignty and regulatory compliance issues. In other words, they can't put the data in the public cloud, but they want to be able to use the power, the elasticity, the compute potential of the public cloud to you know, run big data analytics, HPC, whatever it is on that data. And so they need to have that data adjacent to the cloud. Same goes with, with an Azure Stack solution. Uh, oftentimes it'll be in situations where they want to do DevOps, so they're going to develop, the developers might develop in the cloud, and then they're going to bring it down onto a private Azure Stack installation because they want to manage that hardware themselves, or they actually want to run that cloud sort of software in a place where Azure may not have an availability zone at this point, right? Uh, whether that's Saharan Africa or, you know, wherever it might be, or even, you know, a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean. We see those, and then when they come in, they connect back up to, to us. The other one that we're, two really, we're, we're driving pretty hard on right now with Microsoft and with HP and Cloud28 Plus is the idea of what is called Enterprise Cage, which is there's a lot of legacy hardware out there that, the applications want to be able to run some of the pieces in the cloud, but the hardware obviously can't be virtualized and run in the cloud. But it can be moved to an Equinix data center connected to the cloud. They can use the cloud for the, the compute part, and all of a sudden they're still getting value out of that legacy hardware in a cloud environment, in a distributed environment. Mm -hmm. and, and then the other one is, is really a data ingest one that we've worked a lot with Microsoft on, where they'll have an appliance that they ship out to a customer, the customer will put up to 100 terabytes of data on it. It'll then get automatically shipped to one of our data centers where it's hooked up through high-speed connection to Azure and the data can be ingested in Azure. Now that's a one-time thing, but it, what, what it does is it gives us and our service providers that are on Cloud28 Plus the opportunity to talk to those customers about what are you doing in the cloud and, and what sort of help might you need and things like that. So it gives you an opportunity to learn more about what enterprises are actually trying to do in the cloud. And it allows us then to be able to match up the service providers in our ecosystem that we use Cloud28 Plus for with enterprise customers who need their, their help. Xavier, it seems like this uh, solution approach uh, democratizes the use of hybrid cloud. Smaller organizations, smaller uh, discrete uh, MSPs with a niche perhaps, geographic or even in a vertical industry. Tell us a little bit how this goes down market and why this particular solution is allowing more smaller types of organizations to take advantage of some of the greatest uh, power from hybrid cloud. First, uh, what you see is that we have packaged the things working together with Equinix. So by default, we have solutions which are packaged. It means that an MSP can really make it happen, just picking on Sherry, pick on Sherry, in order that they can be their offering very quickly. The second piece uh, of that is that I have always said the IT chain has not changed so much. It means that if you are a small enterprise, let's say in, a, in this country, in, in the United States, you want to, to shape your new generation of IT. 
do you believe that you will only go to a big cloud provider? No. Because you believe in your system integrator, in your value-added reseller. What is very interesting, uh, when we have packaged all of that with Equinix, Microsoft, having this cage, and so on, value-added resellers can take the ball. Because uh, when the customer will come to them and say, okay, what I should do, should I be, do bid, should I do consume, uh, what I should put my data, uh, how I can do the, the, the public cloud, but also a private cloud, the value-added reseller can guide them. Because it has been predefined, and in this case, there is an answer immediately, and even for small and medium businesses. So the purpose that we have is through Cloud 28 Plus to not only explain all of that through the thought leadership articles that we publish, explaining the trends on the market, explaining that the solutions are there. Uh, you know, not a lot of people uh, know Equinix. You know, there are still people who don't know uh, that uh, they could have a global reach. You are a startup, for instance. You are a startup, you have your new business, and uh, you need to find MSPs everywhere on the globe. How do you do that? If you go to Cloud 28 Plus, you can see that there are networks of service providers, or what we have done with Equinix, that can empower you to do that in a few clicks. So we, we give the access through one explaining, and there is a lot of that. Our, our partners have been publishing more than uh, 900 articles in less than, uh, I believe, six months uh, into Cloud 28 Plus on various topics such as security, big data, interconnection, globalization, AI, GDPR for, uh, uh, for what is concerning Europe, and they learn. They learn, and then they can find offerings because the articles are connected to some people who offer services. And in this case, they can get in touch. So we are easing the process from the thought leadership to the offering, and not the offering as is without any explanation. So this is a, an interesting part. And as I said, uh, what we see also is that the value-added resellers, the system integrators, are, are still playing an enormous role. Uh, we were in a meeting uh, with, uh, together with some uh, very big uh, value-added resellers here in the United States of America, and we are going to build things together. So it's not only Microsoft with HPE and with the, the data centers of Equinix, but we put in the middle of the conversation also the value-added resellers. Why? Because they are near the SMBs. And we tend to believe that everything is simple. You just put your credit card and you go. That's fair enough for some kind of workloads, but this is a minimum of the workloads that are existing today. For most cases, uh, enterprises go to system integrators, they go to value-added resellers and so on. And if you are part, because they are part of the ecosystem also, these value-added resellers and these SIs, they see what we are building, and through the thought leadership articles, for instance, published by Equinix on Cloud28+, Plus, uh, IIS or Comport or another one or UDT uh, in the United States of America can see that it exists. And then when they have the discussion with their, uh, their customers, they can have the solution very, very quickly. It seems to me that for VARs and SIs, uh, the cloud was very disruptive. This gives them, to me, a new lease on life, a, a middle ground to, to take advantage of cloud, but also preserve the value that they already have been giving. Absolutely. Uh, integration services are key. Application migrations are key. Uh, security uh, topics are very, very important. And you have also the new domains coming uh, today. As I said, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, I mentioned it, but also security, blockchain technologies. Uh, what I see, for instance, in, uh, in APAC and in EMEA is that we have more and more tier two service providers who are not only delivering their YASPAS services, but now investing in practices around AI or blockchain or combined with security to uplift and to upgrade their value prop on the market. So for value-added resellers and for uh, system integrators, it is all benefit because they know that it exists and they can accompany their, their customers into the transition. And for them, it is also a, a, a new flow of revenue. Very good. Now, David, uh, it seems to me as we try to get the word out that these solutions are possible and available, we should maybe help people understand which applications, in addition to use cases, are the right fit. Is there something about uh, the way an, an application is architected? For example, the, the, uh, the application and the data are separated, or it's a, a cloud-first or a cloud-only development, or is this uh, a broader uh, spectrum of, of applications? What are the applications that work in this solution like? You know, I, I think the interesting thing about it is is the way we architect and do generalized architectures around hybrid solutions is that 
they don't have to be architected in a specific way. Obviously, they, they have to be modern in the sense of what we've all been doing. You know, I go back to my engineering days 25 years ago, what we've all been doing in terms of separating data and, and compute and things like that. But they can still be done in ways that, I mean, if they want to write a front end and everything in PaaS on Azure and connect that down to legacy data, it, it'll work. It, it just works. And so actually the hybrid situation gives a lot of both SIs and service providers and enterprises more flexibility than if they try to take and move that application, whatever it is, completely into the cloud because that actually takes a lot more work. Now, some service providers uh, will, will believe that hybrid is a, you know, a transitory stage, that enterprises will go to hybrid just to, to buy them time to like, go fully public cloud. I don't believe Microsoft thinks that way, and we certainly don't think that way. I think there's a permanent place for hybrid cloud. And in fact, uh, one of the interesting things that we run into is over the last number of years that I've been at Equinix, you know, when I first got there, we had a lot of our own sellers saying, I don't want to talk to the cloud guys. I don't want them in our data centers because they're just going to take my customers and move them to the cloud. The truth of the matter that we've seen is that demand for our data centers has increased right along with the increase in public cloud consumption. So it's it's a complementary thing, not a substitution thing, because they need that data center. But what they're trying to do is close their own enterprise data centers now. And they're getting into Equinix and finding out the, the connectivity possibilities. And, and no, especially in the enterprises in the G2000, nobody wants to be have cloud vendor lock-in. They're all multi-cloud. And our ESX Fabric solution is a, is a great way to get in one point and be able to connect to multiple cloud providers right there. And so uh, it, it actually, like I said, gives them more flexibility in how they design their apps and also more flexibility in where they run their apps. Do we have any examples of organizations that have already done this? I know it's early in the days of the full solution coming together, and maybe you can name them, maybe you can't but that demonstrates the payoffs, maybe their performance and economic payoffs and also business outcome payoffs. When you do this well, what do you get for it? It's interesting. A lot of the, and unfortunately I can't name any of the customers because of their requests, but we, we have worked with customers in these situations where they've come in initially for a connection to Microsoft, let's say. And then we've kind of brought them together with a service provider and worked with them on network transformations to the point where they have taken their old networks, a lot of MPLS bases and everything else that were that were really very costly and, and didn't perform that well and ended up being able to rework their networks. What we like to say is cloudify their networks because a lot of enterprise networks aren't really ready for the heavy load of, of getting out to the cloud with everything. And we've ended up, you know, increasing their performance up to 10, 15, 20 times for the performance and cut their networking costs in half. So then they can turn around and reinvest that in applications. They can also then, what they like to do is their IT departments are used to now, if they're going to spin up cloud apps, just being able to provision them and not have to worry about, you know, managing the infrastructure and everything else. Well, they want the same thing in the hybrid world, which is where those service providers that we find on Cloud 28 Plus and that we amplify come in because then they can build those managed services, whether it's a managed Azure stack offering or anything else, so that the, the enterprise IT shops can essentially do the same thing with hybrid that they're doing with public cloud, and that is buy it on a consumption model. They're not managing the hardware. They're offloading that to someone else. So they're buying all their stuff in the same model, whether it's considered on-premises in a third-party uh, facility like our own or totally public cloud, it's the same purchasing model, which is making their procurement departments happy too. Uh, Xavier, uh, we've talked about SIs and VARs, uh, clearly MSPs and other uh, specialized cloud providers. It seems to me that for the what we used to call ISVs or the packaged software providers, that this also offers a new lease on life. I've been thinking about this maybe too much as a custom applications uh, or an internal applications development benefit, but for those organizations that have packaged apps and that want to bring them out to a hybrid cloud environment, is that something you're seeing and is that something you're working toward? Yes, absolutely. And uh, we have many, many examples in the past 12 months of uh, ISV software companies coming to Cloud 28 Plus because we give to them the reach. In a few clicks, uh, you know, uh, an ISV uh, 
who has been bidding, uh, I'm thinking of Lequa, a Swedish company, for instance, who has been bidding legal identity management, which is a very hot topic in digital transformation because in the digital transformation, you have your role in your role today when you speak to me, but uh, in your association, you have another role, or if you are running your co own company, you have another role. Uh, with the digital transformation, all these roles needs to be handled, and Lequa has done that. And Partnering and, uh, with Cloud28+, they have been able to have a reach that they, were, they would never have. Only in the past, uh, I believe it is six months, they have been uh, in touch with more than 30 service providers uh, across the world. And uh, I need to say that it's not only get in touch, because they have already closed deals. It means that on one side of the equation for ISVs, it is a, a very big benefit to be able to reach ready-to-be-used uh, service providers and powered by Equinix in some cases, but also for the service providers, it is an enormous benefit because it is how they yield their infrastructure. If I am only on my YAS, PASAS, uh, traditional topics, you know, how I differentiate from the, the hyperscaler, how I differentiate from even my competitors. And uh, what we have seen is uh, the service providers, MSPs, caring more and more about the uh, application makers, the ISVs, uh, in order they can differentiate on the market. So, the, yes, this is a big trend, and we, we welcome uh, into Cloud and Plus more and more uh, ISVs uh, every, every week. Yes. David, um, another concern that organizations have is as they're distributing globally, as there's more moving parts in a hybrid environment, things become more complex. There's some fear of whether that becomes overwhelming complexity. Uh, is there something about the way that you're architecting this that gives them a single view? Is there maybe something that HPE is doing with new products like OneSphere that will help? How do we allow people to gain confidence that they can manage even something that's a globally distributed hybrid set of applications? I think that th there's a number of ways that we're doing that, a number of ways we're partnering with, with HPE to do that, uh, and that we're partnering with, with Microsoft and others to do it. But one of the, the keys really becomes, and I've said it before, is the ECX fabric, where now they're only having to manage really one real connection, one, one wire or fiber connection, into a, a switching fabric that allows them to spin up virtually connections to all the cloud providers to actually span those connections across multiple locations. Uh, and so that makes it easier to manage. And then with our APIs that, that drive the ECX fabric, those can actually be consumed and viewed with, with tools such as OneSphere and things like that to be able to manage everything across that. I think the other thing to help make it easier to manage is the idea that managed service providers are having to take on more and more of that and be the ones that provide the one view, that provide the management of that. Because as you disperse, and yeah, these are multinational, huge enterprises, right? But by the same token, they still tend to view things in those silos. And if they have one place to go, one view to look at, no, it's in you know one set of data centers, and, and like at, at Equinix, our, our three pillars that we really drive are the idea of, of being able to reach everywhere, interconnect everything, and integrate everything. And and that idea says we're the place to put that on top of HPE with these service providers because then that gives you that one place that reaches those multiple clouds, that, that one set of solid, known, trusted advisors in HPE and the service providers that are really certified through Cloud 28 Plus say now we've built this trusted community to really serve the enterprises mm -hmm. in a new world. Right. Okay. Before we close out, let's maybe take a little bit of a look into the crystal ball, a little bit to the future. A year, maybe two years from now, what might we be talking about that are added services within this model? Uh, Xavier, what should we expect? Is this going to extend to the edge with uh, IoT, uh, more machine learning as a service built into the data stack? What, what might be coming up next? So just, just to recap, today we are uh, 810, I believe, uh, partners into Cloud28+. Plus. We cover more than uh, 560 data centers in more than uh, 34 countries. We have been publishing a bit less than 30,000 cloud services in only two years and a half. You see how fast it has been proved. What we expect uh, in the future, you, you named it, uh, edge is a very hot topic. And it's a very hot topic for us, but for Equinix also. And we plan to develop new offering in this area. 
And even with new uh, data center technology, because it, we, it will be necessary to have uh, new findings around what the data center is tomorrow, uh, how it will consume energy, what we can do together. I can tell you even today, we have engaged in conversations between Equinix, ourselves, and another company of Cloud28 Plus to discuss what it could be. So uh, I believe the huge benefit of having this community is that by default we innovate. And we innovate, we have ideas, because it's coming through all the partners. So yes, Edge is definitely a, a very hot spot. Uh, for the platform itself, uh, I believe that uh, even though we do not monetize in the center, which is uh, one of the definition of Plat 28 Plus, the revenue is at the edge for the partner, and this is uh, by, by design. We are thinking of new things such as uh, smart contracting, because you, you named IoT. IoT, uh, but we could speak about some other topics also. You need to have a combination of offering of offerings to make a project. You need to have confidentiality between players. And at the same time, you need to deliver one solution. So it is solutioning on contracting. And we believe that blockchain can add a lot of value in that. So we are starting from a, a platform perspective, because uh, this is what, what is Cloud 20 Plus also, on top of being an ecosystem on the community. It is a digital business platform. By the way, we are very happy because it has been recognized as such by Gartner in several research notes since September last year. We want to start to include these new functions around smart contracting blockchain. The other part of the equation is how we help the, the, our, our members to uh, really generate more business. Uh, so today we have a module which is integrated into the platform to amplify and their articles and uh, their offerings through social media. We have also a lead generation engine, which is working quite well. But what we want is to launch now uh, e-lead generation, electronic lead generation, and once again through thought leadership articles. Because we believe that if we can give the feedback to the people who are uh, filling these kind of forms, you know, with how they position versus uh, all their peers and how they position versus uh, industry analyst messages, they will be very eager to engage with us. And the last piece of, of the thing is, uh, you, you spoke a bit about that, but it's more long term. We need to investigate what we can do. It is all what is around machine learning. Because uh, this platform is a jewel now with uh, all these services, these interactions between the people. And we need to, uh, to deep dive on this to find what is the value we can bring out of all this traffic because we have such a traffic now in Cloud 28 Plus that uh, trends are coming. For instance, I can say to any partner today that if they publish an article on uh, what is happening in the public sector today, it will have a yield that is X time the one that if you publish something about yes. But all this intelligence, we have it. So what we are packaging now is how we give it back to, to our members in order that themselves, they can catch up on the trends very, very fast and publish things that are interesting for the people. But in a nutshell, these are the different axes that we see. And I know that evangelism and education is a big part of what you do at Cloud28. Where are some great places that people can go to learn more? Yeah. Absolutely. So this is one thing. You can read, you can, uh, you can see not only what the partners publish, but how they think, which gives you the direction, how they operate. So this is building the trust. And, uh, and for me, you know, uh, at the end of the day, for an end user customer, they need to, uh, to have the trust and to know what uh, they will get out of their investment. Well, very good. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. We've been exploring how a triumvirate of global data center hosting, cloud platform makers, and a global community of cloud providers are solving some vexing issues when it comes to bringing cloud to more regions around the globe. And we've learned how new breeds of hybrid cloud solutions are allowing more users to attain world-class cloud services nearly anywhere. So please join me in thanking our guests. We've been here with David Anderson, Global Alliance Director at Equinix for its Microsoft Alliance. Thank you, David. Thank you, Dana. It's been a pleasure. We've also been here with Xavier Poulson. He's the Vice President, Worldwide Service Providers Business and Cloud28 Plus at HPE. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dana. A pleasure. And a big thank you as well to our audience for joining us for this Briefings Direct Voice of the Customer Digital Transformation Success Story Discussion. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inter Arbor Solutions, your host for this ongoing series of Hewlett Packard Enterprise sponsored interviews. Thanks again for listening. Please pass this along to your own IT community and do come back next time.